Good evening. Recently, the YouTuber Stellar1 did a video in which he covered Gmod 9 fan reuploads and classic GM videos, two ARG channels that depict horror stories through the medium of the game Gary's Mod. If you're a viewer who isn't familiar with Gary's Mod ARGs, then I recommend you watch Stellar's video first, then come back to this one. Without prior knowledge, this video will be hard to follow. Stellar did a great job with the ARGs he covered in his video, but he missed one which is, in my opinion, the most intriguing of them all. So I've taken it upon myself to analyze it. Today we'll be looking at the channel Gunslinger Pro 2009 and trying to piece together its narrative. Let's begin. At a first glance, Gunslinger Pro 2009 appears to trace the same footsteps as the projects I mentioned a moment ago. You've got an obscure channel uploading poor quality Gmod videos with an unsettling edge to them. You would likely expect to click on a video and spot a shadowy figure looming at the player from a doorway or window, but this channel is different. From the start, Gunslinger Pro distinguishes itself simply in its name. We can realistically believe that Gunslinger Pro 2009 is a screen name the owner went by on other platforms. It would be silly to assume the same about GM Classic videos. Indeed, it seems this channel is more personally tied to its owner and operator. This channel is also different in that it focuses on Team Fortress 2, whereas most other ARGs have revolved around base Gmod assets. For those who might not know, the Gunslinger is a weapon for the engineer in Team Fortress 2 that gives him a robotic arm. Take a closer look at the channel's profile picture, by the way. At first, I thought it was the stock Steam profile picture for the NG, but upon further inspection, we can see it's actually a unique image. The dim lighting and the engineer's blank expression combine to be a little off-putting. As far as exposition comes, though, this name and avatar are about all we're given. The other ARGs used their channel description to indicate that they were archiving old videos. This channel doesn't have one, though. No. It's all a lot more vague than what you might be used to. To piece together a story, it looks like we're going to have to rely on the videos themselves. So, let's get into it. The first upload, Sniper is Book, was posted the same day the channel was created. June 13th, 2017. Here's that. Sniper is Book! Read me! So, we've got a crude animatic starring the Heavy and the Sniper. It's a clear play on the short nonsensical clips from the old era of Gary's Mod Machinima, such as Scout is Sandwich and other videos like that. What is there to note? Well, there's a long blank outro, and poor audio quality and some visual distortion, but that's about it. The next upload took almost two and a half years to arrive, so let's see what the big holdup was for. The video Spy is Sandwich was uploaded on November 21st, 2019. This video is a little bit longer. Sandwich. How could this happen? Yet another Scout is Sandwich style video, but before it can resolve, we spot a blue spy panically banging on the screen. We also see someone creep up from behind and grab the spy with his fizz gun. It seems that the spy is trying to send a distress signal to the viewer, but the player notices and drags him away. Note the spy's movement, too. It's smooth, unlike the other characters who've dragged along the map in the Gmod fashion. You might be able to piece together what's going on already, but I'm gonna hold my tongue on explaining it until we've reviewed the next video. On to that. Gary's Mod Ragdoll Walker tutorial was uploaded almost a whole year later on October 11, 2020. It's the longest video yet at just over three minutes, so I'll go ahead and get it underway.
Well, as the title would indicate, Gunslinger Pro 2009 shows us how to make a ragdoll walker, like those used back in the day by machinima creators like Kidio 706 Once he's put it together, he gives us a demonstration of it in action. You might have noticed a couple anomalies in this video, though. First, look at this scene in the center point of well. As the player pulls out the remover tool to dispose of the soldier walker, he shakes his head no. It's a little freaky. Second, as the tutorial begins, we see the spy ragdoll pick its head up with no input from the player. Third, while the player is distracted building the contraption, we see something in the distance. And finally, at the end of the closing demonstration, the spy walker runs away from the camera and the player flies after to retrieve him. Well, taking all of that as well as what we saw in the last video into account, there was really only one conclusion that I could come up with, and that's that these ragdolls, or at least some of them, are alive, to some extent. It looks like the blue spy is the only one who can move freely though. This red soldier is alive, we can see by how he seems to beg for his life as the player goes to delete him, but he only moves his head. If he was capable of more, I reckon he would have tried running away from the player, wouldn't you? Speaking of running away from the player, we know so far that the spy has tried at least twice, once in the last video and once at the end of this one. Remember that third anomaly I mentioned though? I would guess that's also the spy. Maybe he tried to capitalize on the fact that the player was distracted and made a run for it, but was captured off camera. That would mean he's run away three times. Let's see what's up in the next video. Yeah, the title's a little different, isn't it? Looks like this video isn't a production like the others, it's raw footage. The date reads October 25th, 2010. The video itself was uploaded on October 14th, 2020, about a week after the Ragdoll Walker video went up. I'm going to summarize this one instead of letting it play though, because it's four minutes long and mostly dark. I recommend you watch it on your own sometime though, because my description won't give justice to how uncomfortable it is to watch. The video starts and we piece together that we're seeing things from a perspective that's definitely not the players. Whatever it is, it's short and has legs that somewhat resemble that of a head crab. It's in some kind of a maze or series of hallways in the dark room of GM Construct. We watch it struggle and limp around before it finds a reflective surface, where we finally get a decent look at it. To me, it looks like a creature made from a box, a watermelon, and the dismembered head of a spy. It bashes through the mirror, making it to the exit of the room, but the player notices and grabs him. Once again, the video ends abruptly. The best conclusion I could come to is that this creature is meant to be the blue spy we've seen in the last couple videos. The player seems to have disfigured him and tried to trap him in the dark room. Why? Well, it seems obvious that this is a punishment. He ruined the spy's sandwich video, and he ran away twice in the ragdoll walker tutorial. Three strikes and you're out. And here, in this video, it seems he's upset the player again by breaking out of the dark room. So, God knows what will happen to him now. At first, I figured this reflective surface we saw was just a device to help the viewer understand what's going on, but it may have also been an in-universe tool to torment the spy. It forced him to look at what he's been transformed into. It's possible that him attacking it wasn't an intentional attempt at escape, but actually an angry traumatic response to seeing himself in this state. You know, all mutilated. This video carries the heaviest implications out of all of them, but I don't want to hang on it too long. Let's check out the latest entry. In Sniper is Century, posted on February 20th, 2021, we return to the format of the original two videos. It's very short, so I'll just let this one play. The sniper is blood! Entry! Yeah. At this point, our inkling that these ragdolls are alive is really all these videos need to be freaky. I guess the blown out audio and poor video quality helps too though. Just for a second, I want you to try imagining a human body contorted the same way this poor sniper has been. That's like something you'd see in a sci-fi horror movie. Did you notice the blue spy is absent? This is the first video he hasn't showed up in since Sniper's book, the first video on the channel. Wonder what happened to him. The fact that these ragdolls already have blood splattered on them is also strange. Does that indicate that these are corpses he's playing with? I don't know, that's kind of a stretch. Notice the engineer is wearing a gunslinger, by the way. That means this guy is probably meant to represent the player. He is Gunslinger Pro 2009, after all. That's sort of notable when you notice how he's proudly displaying his Sentry-Sniper combination. So, I started this video saying I was going to try to piece together a narrative of what's going on in these videos. To do that, I'm going to recap what we know definitively, what we can reasonably assume, and then discuss my own speculation. Once that's done, I'll give a brief summary of the story thus far. Starting with what we know for sure, thanks to this title, we know that these uploads take place around 2010. The person posting the videos and the player we see in them is almost definitely the same person, Gunslinger Pro 2009. We know that he's a big TF2 fan, in particular of the Engineer class. We know that he plays Gmod with the Dr. Kleiner player model. And we know that he has an interest in making Gmod machinimas and tutorial videos. As for what we can reasonably assume, at least some of the ragdolls this guy plays with are alive or haunted, however you want to say that. 
it seems that he's aware that these characters are alive, but continues to play. It seems that these characters are actually afraid of the player and try to escape him, but he always recaptures them. Now onto my speculation. You might have noticed that the seeming protagonist of this ARG is the Blue Spy. I think the reason he's such a prominent character is because the player is an engineer fanboy. After all, the spy directly counters the engineer in TF2. It would make sense for someone who mains the engineer to hold a grudge against that class. Especially because we see that Gunslinger Pro 2009 represents himself with a red NG, while the spy we keep seeing is blue, the rival team. Also, I don't think the player is a child. At least not one in elementary school. Maybe they're a teenager. It makes sense that a child wouldn't be alarmed at moving ragdolls since they might just think that they're NPCs. But would a child block an NPC in a dark room and turn it into a watermelon monster? I mean, maybe. But I would still disagree that it's a child because of the ragdoll walker video. Would your average kid really know how to make one of these things on his own? Notice how he doesn't make any typos in the captions either. His grammar is pretty good too. So it's my belief that he's an adult or at least a teenager who knows and gets a kick out of toying with them. Kind of like Sid from Toy Story, but he tortures ragdolls instead of toys. With all that established, my version of events is this. There's a Steam user named Gunslinger Pro 2009, a teenager or maybe a young adult with an interest in Team Fortress 2 and Gary's Mod. Either by luck or by his own doing, the ragdolls in his game come alive and start trying to escape him. He decides to start making Gary's Mod tutorials and videos, but the ragdolls misbehaving poses to be an issue in that. In particular, this blue spy messes up two of his videos by running away, so he decides to boot up Construct, block him in the dark room, and mutilate him as a punishment. We never see him again. That's your summary. So, what do I like about this ARG that places it above the others? I like that the focus is the player and the ragdolls, two base elements of Gary's mod. I like that he uses mounted TF2 content instead of just Half-Life 2 models. I like the use of free space, underappreciated map in my opinion. I like the fact that we've only visited Construct in the Dark Room one time in the whole ARG, and almost all the other ARGs, the Dark Room on Construct is the entire focus. I like that there's not a lot of downtime. There's only five videos, a total runtime of eight minutes, and it still manages to be engaging and memorable. And finally, I like that it's show, don't tell horror. No description, no premise. You have to watch and figure it all out on your own. Or, I guess let me explain it to you. What I'm trying to say is that the horror of Gunslinger Pro 2009 comes from your own imagination rather than a spooky black figure. That's all for today. Is there anything about Gunslinger Pro 2009 you noticed that I didn't point out in the video? Maybe you saw something I didn't. Maybe you've got a better explanation than I do. If so, sound off in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.